Hello YouTube, welcome to Monday's edition of The Breakfast Club. Got that funk here? Thanks for joining me. I'd also like to thank my uh, guest host last week, Brock Lawley, for taking over my slot and giving us his perspective, his conservative perspective on the uh, reasons why Donald Trump became president. And Brock and I have known each other on YouTube. We've been acquainted for an awfully long time and I would not uh, consider Brock my friend, nor would he consider me his friend as such. But I do have a, a certain degree of um, respect for where Brock's coming from insofar as, yeah, of course, Brock is prone to hyperbole and uh, he can be quite disingenuous sometimes in some of the things that he says. But underneath that, uh, Brock really means, he really believes the shit that uh, he spouts. Uh, he might uh, overdo it a little bit for presentation's sake. Uh, but yeah, Brock, Brock, Brock is sincere about the kind of things that he believes and he's quite articulate so I thought it would be good to have him on. When he asked if he could uh, uh, participate on The Breakfast Club as a guest host, I thought, well yeah, cool, because you're right, I uh, don't really have anyone quite so far to the right as Brock as a, as a regular host or even on my uh, parachute list. So I was quite happy to put him on the parachute list and actually drop him right in. Especially with all the background stuff going on recently with uh, protests at various different places uh, against Milo, uh, Yiannopoulos and all that. And whilst Brock is nowhere near as odious as Milo is, um, at least that's by reputation, I've never actually watched Milo. Um, and I've watched an awful lot of Brock Lawley and believe me, um, you know, I, I've butted heads with Brock more on the internet than any other person. Um, but I, I thought it was important with all the stuff going on about how, you know, people are trying to close down uh, opposing viewpoints. And, you know, not here on The Breakfast Club. That's never what I want this channel to be about. And so I wouldn't rule it out if I invite Brock back again. Another reason why I uh, agreed to let Brock be a guest host on The Breakfast Club was because I knew that no matter what the uh, viewing audience had to say about his point of view, that uh, he would be able to handle himself in the comment section um, responsibly in, insofar as you know Brock's Brock can take criticism it more or less rolls right off of his back and um, you know you kinda need that because if you're gonna be saying things that are potentially um, very contentious then you need to be able to defend yourself uh, properly uh, in the comment section and uh, I, I think Brock was quite good at that and I want to thank you Brock for um, sticking to your end of the deal because I made a big point when uh, I said to Brock he could be a guest host that being active in the comment section was kind of part of the deal. So um, I hope the audience appreciated that uh, different perspective and the fact is that uh, there are still people out there who I haven't had yet as a guest host who I want to get and also people who I used to have who I want to get back and so on so I'm not actually um, fishing for any more guest hosts as it were. Um, but I'm always open to new people um, who might want to. If you ever want to drop me a line on Twitter, you have to follow me first, and then um, I'll try to follow you back if, if, uh, if you let me know. And uh, we can go from there. Now, the rest of this video I would have liked to have talked about uh, some of my misgivings about Brock's points about Donald Trump. <clears throat> and I can't really devote as much time to that as I might like, unfortunately. Uh, but I will say this. Um, for Brock to sort of accuse me uh, implicitly with his video of being uh, having no intellectual credibility because of my um, stances on various issues. I won't be lectured about intellectual credibility by Brock Lawley. Um, you know, Brock achieved YouTube infamy around about 2010 for um, relentlessly plagiarizing various different sources and sort of passing it off as his own creative material. So, no, um, I'm not going to take that kind of criticism from you, mate. But honestly, uh, there's no one's point of view that's completely right. You know, we all put an awful lot of investment into our opinions, and hopefully those of us uh, who are open-minded enough to realize that sometimes we get it wrong, if we're presented with better information, uh, we will come to a different opinion. And if not, I mean, some people can be very stubborn about their opinions, and I know a lot about that because I'm often one of those people, as is Brock Lawley. So I, I, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think that uh, it lacks intellectual credibility to see things from a different point of view. Uh, both points of view can have some validity without canceling each other out or necessarily being so opposed to one another that uh, 
that only one can be right and the other can be wrong. I mean, sometimes that's true, of course. But when you're talking about uh, political issues, uh, I don't think that's always pertains. As far as Donald Trump himself is concerned, my own opinion, Brock, about how Donald Trump became president is pretty simple, really. Um, you know, even if you put aside everybody's misgivings about uh, all the meddling that went on in the 2016 election, the shenanigans and all that kind of thing, and you just concentrate on Donald Trump's campaign and uh, everything that he said in the run-up to the election. Uh, prior to his nomination, it's my opinion that the press paid way too much disproportionate attention to Donald Trump, and that's down to the fact that Donald Trump knew how to work the press properly. He, he knew exactly what he was doing. And he did it very, very well. He made himself very available in the early stages of the uh, campaign. He was doing phone-in uh, interviews on news channels and so on. And uh, basically every couple of weeks, Donald Trump would say something completely outrageous that forced the, the press to cover him. But they wouldn't cover him responsibly. It was only after Donald Trump got the nomination that the press maybe sort of realized that they might be slightly complicit in the ascendancy of Donald Trump and hey maybe they should you know, sort of maybe treat him kind of like they treat other politicians and you know sort of demand more substance from the man and uh, this is when Donald Trump decided that the media was his adversary Donald Trump would not be where he is right now if it wasn't for the help of the media so for Donald Trump to pretend that the media is his enemy is fucking hilarious to me Okay, from my point of view, um, and it's been studied, I think Donald Trump had a couple of billion dollars worth of free media exposure. No one can compete with that, no matter how much money you earn. And he did it by saying loads of outrageous things and, and really not getting properly addressed, not really being properly called out for it. I'll give you an example. When he said, um, you know, that he thought we ought to bring back torture and it should be worse than waterboarding and so forth. I mean, that is completely a war crime and it's un-American. And it puts our own soldiers who might get captured by foreigners at risk of torture if we're openly going to be torturing when we capture people. I mean, it's absurd and it's outrageous and it should really have disqualified him or anyone who makes that kind of a statement in a presidential campaign from becoming president. If you're going to advocate war crimes before you're elected, it doesn't bode well for after when you're elected. So I don't think, when, when you take that, and you also said about you know how we should target the, the families of uh, terrorists to get at the terrorists because if they don't value their own lives, they'll value the lives of their families. Again, that's a war crime. And again, he's advertised it. And they didn't call him out on it in the press. They act all shocked and everything, but they didn't say, hey, by the way, that's a war crime. That kind of disqualifies you from being president if you're going to break international law and... and um, in that kind of a way, and if you're going to advertise it, you're going to be you're going to be a pariah state. You're going to be a terrorist state openly. Um, and I don't know. For Donald Trump, basically got let off in the early parts of the campaign, and his campaign, quite frankly, had so much momentum going into the uh, convention that there was no way he wasn't going to get nominated. And once the Republicans decided that there was actually a possibility that Donald Trump would get elected anyway. A lot of them started to play ball. I think the only reason that the um, establishment Republicans weren't really very keen on Donald Trump in the early stages is because they didn't really think he had a shot of beating Hillary Clinton. They thought that they were basically going to have to throw away the presidency, that they had no chance of winning. And I'm sure even Donald Trump was surprised when he actually won on the night. But having said that, my opinion, you can say everything you want about why Donald Trump became president. You can blame it on SJWs and all that sort of uh, hyperbolic uh, left-wing nonsense, or you can blame it on uh, collusion with Russia, whatever, whatever you want to blame it on. You know, um, too many people voted for the Green Party or whatever. You know, whatever, whatever wherever you want to lay the blame. Uh, I blame the rise of Trump on two things. Number one. Uh, disproportionate media exposure compared to the seriousness of his candidacy and number two Trump voters I don't blame people who didn't vote for Trump I don't give a fuck if they voted for the Green Party or, or the Libertarian Party or if they didn't vote at all if you didn't vote for Trump in my opinion it's not your fault that he's president I know people don't agree with that position good friends of mine right here in the Breakfast Club will tear me a new asshole for saying that but my own opinion is the only people who we have to blame for Trump being president is people who fucking fell for it and voted for him. A lot of whom I'm sure are feeling a lot of regret right now. 
were at least serious misgivings. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, hopefully tomorrow we'll have a video from Sister Danger for you on The Breakfast Club. Please let's have a vigorous discussion in the comments section down below, and I'll see you again next Monday. May all your ups and downs be ups.